Next up, we have a presentation from FPR Limited with the ticker code FPR, an industrial automation technology company. To tell us more, today I am joined by Executive Director and CTO, Mark Pivak. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Very well, thank you, and thank you for inviting us. Thank you. I'm Mark Pivak, CTO and founder of FBR, uh, formerly Fast Brick Robotics. So the global construction industry is massive uh, and it hasn't really changed in the bricklaying field for over 6,000 years. What we've seen in uh, modern manufacturing is a trend towards automation and robotics, but that's really only happened in the factory. What FBR is all about is about bringing that kind of speed and accuracy out onto the construction site. And we do that through our really core technology, which is dynamic stabilization technology. What that enables us to do is have a very accurate and fast robot on the end of a very long, flexible boom and achieve really accurate placement of objects over a very wide area. Now we've chosen brick laying as our first application for this, uh, simply because brick laying is a massive industry and uh, it's something which we've been working on for a long time now and we're actually out in the field now building real houses out in the real world. So just to give you a rough idea of the global market size, we're looking at about $500 billion a year to supply and lay the bricks which are currently used in industry. Uh, and with robotics coming into that industry, uh, there's potential for that to grow and even overtake other materials. The construction industry is massive and it uses a wide range of materials, uh, such as tilt panel, concrete, precast, steel, brick and block. Uh, and we're just one contributor into that massive industry, uh, but the whole industry is ripe for automation and brick and block laying is our first application. So FBR's uh, solution is uh, we arrive on site with a truck, the whole thing is truck based so that there's very, very quick mobilization to site and very much the way that a crane or concrete pump arrives on site, puts its outriggers down and deploys its boom, it's then into uh, manufacture. So one of the big advantages of FBR technology is that we actually use an industry proven product. As I mentioned before, bricks and blocks have been laid for 6,000 years, so there's no real change there. The construction industry is very conservative uh, and can be slow to change, uh, but we found here in Western Australia and uh, also around the world, there's a, a huge amount of interest to <clears throat> use new processes, but with existing proven materials. So that's a really big advantage for FBR compared to say 3D printing, which has to uh, introduce new materials into the construction industry. And here I'm talking about concrete kind of uh, printing. So we're already out on site working with some of the top tier builders in Western Australia and we built a number of different projects uh, ranging from single detached housing through to commercial centres, childcare centres uh, and we're currently working on a 16 townhouse uh, development which is two storey. In addition to those uh, buildings out on site here in Western Australia, within our factory area here in Perth, we also have a test building area with slabs set up, uh, and we quite often build test structures for interested clients from overseas. So we built uh, in the style of uh, Mexico, the US uh, and Europe. So we know that this technology can be deployed worldwide. So one of the big factors uh, for this technology is improving the environmental impact. So already uh, we have seen massive waste reductions. There's a huge amount of waste in the building industry uh, and we see really good implications for automating that by predefining the design and doing things robotically. There's a lot, worth, a lot less waste uh, than in the manual process. So we see big cost savings there in addition to the time frame. So our four pillars at FBR are speed, accuracy, safety, and waste reduction. When we started this project off back in 2005, we decided that to get it into the construction industry, we really had to hit those four pillars. 
Uh, and by doing so, when you achieve speed improvements, accuracy improvements, waste reduction, uh, all those things combine with safety to actually reduce the cost of building on site. So the construction industry, unfortunately, does uh, have quite a bad reputation for stress and strain on, on humans uh, and serious in, injuries throughout the industry. And the industry is continually working to try and improve safety. It's very difficult when you're working with um, construction sites, which can be a little haphazard at times, uh, and people are interacting with heavy equipment and doing manual jobs, lifting heavy things and using tools and so on. So by roboticizing the whole process, you can greatly uh, improve that safety simply by removing humans from the process. So there are still humans involved, but they're no longer touching the work or not touching the work as much uh, as what traditional manual methods do. So some of the other advantages, we can build at elevation without needing scaffolding. You know, working at heights is a big safety factor. Uh, and we're basically working to try and remove all of the manual labour. The bricks are loaded into the Hadrian machines by a telehandler or forklift. Uh, and from there on, the entire construction process is completely automated right through to the placing of the bricks in the structure. As I mentioned before, we've been making a lot of commercial pro progress. Uh, we've been out on site since uh, 2019 doing various projects while we're also uh, continuing to develop our technology and, and make it ready to deploy around the world. One of the things which we've done and been involved in with for a long time is uh, working towards scaling this to a global market. As such, uh, we have an MOU in place with Lieber, very large German uh, construction equipment manufacturer. Uh, and we're working towards long-term manufacturing agreements with, with them. We've also been working with brick and block manufacturers and also builders, not only in Australia, but around the world. So we've been uh, building, or we have built a house in Australia using uh, Wienerberg as porotherm blocks. Wienerberg are the largest brick and block manufacturer in the world. They have very large market share in Europe. Uh, we've been working with them for quite a few years on working out the best way to get Hadrian's to enter the European market. Uh, we have been hindered a little by COVID over the last few years, but we're pleased to say that uh, we're now able to travel again worldwide. Uh, so we should see a real ramp up in uh, international activity. We've been able to lay uh, AAC in calcium silicate blocks, not only just clay and concrete blocks. Uh, there's a, another European company, Zella, uh, who have another very large market share in Europe with AAC and calcium silicate blocks. And we've built test structures here in Australia with those. And uh, another thing we've been working on is to reduce waste on site to zero by working with sequence pallets. So this is all about the digitalization of the construction industry, trying to dematerialize it. Uh, and we can actually achieve that. So because we design the entire house and know the exact position of every block in that building, we know exactly how it needs to be cut and the sequence that they're going to be laid. It's actually possible for us to pre-cut all the bricks in a factory, stack them on a pallet so that when it arrives at site, it's like a kit of bricks uh, ready for assembly and then Hadrian simply assembles it. In terms of market development, we've got a non-binding term sheet for up to 5,000 homes in Mexico with one of their large builders, GP Vivienda, and we're very excited about that looking forward to uh, entering that market. And we've also got a market entry feasibility study uh, with the UAE, Ministry of uh, Energy and Infrastructure uh, in the Middle East. Very exciting, very large market, uh, and we're moving towards those. Another key thing we've been working on is the next generation Hadrian X. So these are quite large and sophisticated robots. We've been 
continuing the uh, development of the existing two hadrians that we have. Uh, and in the meantime, looking at what's needed to roll this out globally. Now, one of the things about bricks being a 6,000 year old product is that they're really optimized around the human. So the size and weight of those bricks is, is limited by what a human can lift. Robots don't care about uh, the size or weight of the blocks that they're working with. So our next generation Hadrian is designed to lay much bigger blocks. Uh, effectively, they'll be twice the size and twice the weight that the current Hadrian uh, works with. That in itself will increase the, uh, the construction speed because what we're aiming to do is be able to build a complete house in less than a day. That means we'll be able to arrive on site, deploy, set up, build the house in a few hours, pack up and either head off to another site or finish that job. At the moment, it takes us a few days to build a house, which is a fantastic improvement over what can be manually achieved, which can range from two to six weeks, even longer, depending on the, the design of the house uh, and the availability of labour. And the availability of labour is actually a huge problem in the construction industry. We've recently been through a bit of a building boom. We've seen the price of bricks to be laid uh, increase from a dollar to about up to $4 a brick, depending on uh, the desperation of the builders to get things built. Uh, and we see that in the long term, Hadrian should stabilise the brick laying availability and also the pricing of the brick laying, and that'll be a big factor um, for builders. So one of the other important features of Hadrian 110 is the delivery system through the boom is being built so that it can be developed to eventually work with other products other than bricks. So this uh, opens up the possibility of uh, laying roof tiles or dealing basically with anything else which needs to be positioned or placed or assembled on a, on a construction site. Uh, one of the other things which we've been working on is uh, a demonstration of Hadrian's DST or the dynamic stabilization technologies ability to stabilize a boom for either concrete pumping or 3D printing. We've done that uh, and we've demonstrated that uh, and our CEO uh, is currently traveling the world uh, looking for how we could uh, either introduce that into the 3D construction, 3D printing market, which is currently dependent on gantries uh, to position the nozzles. Uh, and we're just deciding whether we'll be um, licensing that technology into those sort of providers or perhaps competing against them. But Notwithstanding that, we still believe that, that uh, bricks and blocks offer a massive advantage because they are a QC, well-known product uh, compared to the newer materials which are being used in, in 3D printing in the construction industry. So this is a little bit of an overview of what we've got planned for the next 12 months. Uh, we're looking for binding orders for robots which will place into what we call wall as a service entities. We know that Builders typically don't want to spend huge amounts of money or train a workforce uh, for using robots. So we intend to set up uh, wall as a service entities to act as essentially a bricklaying contractor. What that means is that the way uh, builders interact with the market is not really going to change. Uh, we're looking to establish in the US and Europe, uh, and I mentioned the 3D concrete printing. So we're looking into that. Uh, and also, as uh, Hadrian 110 or the next generation Hadrian comes online, we'll be uh, rolling out and demonstrating roofing and then, of course, doing more structural building uh, and finally bringing this out to the world with um, demonstration projects leading into commercial entities in Europe and the US and hopefully the Middle East. So if you have any questions or Looking for more information, there's all our contact details. Uh, and also after these few slides, we have a few appendices with a little more information if you'd like to dig in deeper. Uh, and I'd just like to thank you for your attention uh, and invite you to find out more about FPR. Thank you. Thanks for the great presentation, Mark. Um, there's been quite a few questions come through. We have run slightly out of time, so, but I'll jump into a couple of them now. 
Um, so when will the first batch of next generation Hadrian machines roll off the assembly line? And what does the manufacturing ramp up look like? Yeah, so as I mentioned, we're currently assembling uh, Hadrian and we're on track to uh, have that mechanically complete in September. And we're looking at bringing it online early next year. Uh, there's quite a bit of commissioning work to do on that. Uh, and from there, we'll just go through a continuous improvement process and ramp up production. Here in Australia, we have capacity to uh, produce machines. Uh, and as that rolls along and increases, that'll eventually shift into uh, offshore production as well. So really exciting times ahead. Thanks, Mark. There's actually just a question. The few, this has been asked a few times, but so in the near future, could the machine be adapted for other industries such as forestry, mining, space exploration and agriculture? Sure. DST really enables the accurate placement of materials uh, or a robotic end effector over a very large area. So there's a huge range of industries that it could be applicable to. Basically, if you want a, a robot that could have a reach of 30 metres or 50 metres, or even an end effector hanging off a crane, uh, that's all possible. So there's huge uh, potential applications in defence, forestry, mining, uh, the construction industry. Uh, and as you mentioned, you know, space is the future frontier, but we're not quite there yet. Wonderful. Well, Mark, thanks again for joining us. Our broker briefing, a copy of today's recording will be available online. But um, for all the webinar attendees who are sending through questions, I would encourage you to reach out to Mark directly via the contact details on the bottom of their ASX releases. But again, thank you for joining us. Thank you.